I want you to picture the scene. You're a developer working for an e-commerce company and you've been given the task of modernizing your product management system. The product management system allows users to manage the product catalog, as well as including a dynamic pricing algorithm to generate discount prices based on the volume of products that people order. You go off and implement this service using Node.js and AWS serverless services, roll out the new service and everything seems great. Until you start to see some frustration from your users. Sometimes users are creating products and it's taking a long time for the prices to be generated. Users are creating the products, trying to look at the products and the pricing isn't there for a few seconds. They can look at it a few times and eventually the pricing will appear. And sometimes the pricing just isn't being generated at all. Sometimes users are creating new products and the pricing is never ever appearing no matter how long they wait. That frustration is coming directly back to you as a developer. And now you find yourself jumping through multiple different screens inside the AWS console, trying to work out exactly what is causing your system to go wrong. You're trying to stitch together multiple different Lambda functions, databases, SNS topics to work out exactly what what is causing your system to fail. Thankfully, Datadog is here to help. Hi there, I'm James Eastham, a serverless advocate here at Datadog. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can observe your systems, diagnose issues, and increase insight into your serverless applications using Datadog, whilst also making zero changes to your actual application code. And to start, let's take a look at how you can actually add Datadog observability into your application. In your case, you're using the AWS CDK as your infrastructure as code tool as choice. So the first thing you're going to need to do is to install the Datadog CDK Constructs V2 NPM package. Now, don't worry if you're not a CDK user, the repository linked at the end of this video provides examples in a range of different infrastructure as code tools and programming languages. The first thing you're going to need to do is actually add Datadog to all your Lambda functions. And to do that, you can use the Datadog CDK Constructs this Datadog construct comes from the Datadog CDK Constructs v2 library that you've just installed. And this allows you to really quickly add Datadog instrumentation to all of your Lambda functions. The first thing you're going to need to do is to configure the version of the node layer and the version of the Datadog extension. I'll come back to what both of those variables do in just a moment. And then you've got five required properties that you need to set. The first is the Datadog site. This is the site that you actually want to send your data to. You then need to set your Datadog API key. And you can do that either by setting the API key as plain text or by passing in a secrets manager secret ARN where your Datadog API key is stored in plain text. So you can either use a plain text API key or use AWS secrets manager. And then you've got three properties you need to set that configure how this application is going to appear inside Datadog. They are the name of the service, the version of your application code, and the environment this function is deployed to. Notice here, I'm hard coding the service to be the node product API. The environment is being pulled from an environment variable or it's going to default to dev. And the version is also being pulled from an environment variable or it's going to default to latest. Once you've configured the Datadog CDK construct and these required values, you can then call Datadog configuration .add Lambda functions and you can pass in an array of all your Lambda functions that are configured inside the CDK. Okay. And that's it. That's all you need to do to add Datadog instrumentation to all of your Lambda functions. As long as you specify all of the Lambda functions in your application inside this array, you will get Datadog instrumentation configured. What's actually happening when you do that, you might be wondering. Datadog instruments your Lambda functions by running the Datadog Lambda extension as a Lambda layer. This is a completely separate running process that is used to transmit data from your function environment to Datadog. Alongside that is an additional layer that's installed containing the runtime specific Datadog tracer code. In this case, that will be the Node.js tracer. What that means is that you don't actually need to package the tracer inside the zip file that you deploy to Lambda because that package is added as a layer. As a really quick side note, if you're using Datadog extension version 67 or above, you'll be using the new low overhead Rust-based Lambda extension. This is a new version of the Datadog extension completely rewritten from the ground up to leverage Rust's reliability, efficiency, and sustainability. This extension also provides a faster, more resilient experience with reduced resource consumption that ensures consistent consistent performance and lower operational costs at scale. 
After the deployment is complete, if you go and take a look at your Lambda function in the AWS console, you'll notice a couple of changes. First, two additional layers have been added to your function. One for the Datadog Lambda extension, and notice this is using version 67, the new Rust-based version of the extension. And the second one containing the Datadog tracer for Node.js version 22, because our function is also using Node 22. As well as them two additional layers, you'll also notice that the handler for your Lambda function has also changed. This is due to the way that the Lambda tracing works. It works by wrapping your application code inside a handler that comes from the Datadog layer. This allows us to automatically configure the Datadog tracer, as well as catching any errors and ensuring that all your telemetry gets flushed to Datadog before the Lambda execution environment is frozen. Now, if you switch over to the environment variables tab inside the Lambda console, you'll notice a few more changes. There will be a set of environment variables that have been automatically added, prefixed with the dd underscore prefix. The important one here is the dd lambda handler. The datadog wrapper function is going to configure all of the required telemetry and then simply call the function defined in this dd lambda handler variable. The datadog cdk construct is going to automatically set these values for you. Now, this is fantastic, but what does this actually mean for you as a developer? Remember, all you're dealing with is frustrated users, and you want to diagnose exactly what is happening inside your serverless applications. So to have a look at what this gives you, let's head over to the Datadog UI. From inside the Datadog homepage, you'll need to navigate over to the infrastructure section on the left-hand side, and then into the serverless tab. Remember, at this point, you've not actually made any changes to your application code. And as soon as you open up this serverless view, you'll immediately see issues and insights that Datadog has automatically pulled out of your instrumented functions, as well as a set of summary graphs giving you some high level information about how your serverless applications are performing. Scrolling down through this view, you'll see all of your Lambda functions grouped by service. Remember, there was two issues that your users were facing. The first was that pricing simply wasn't being generated at all. And the second was pricing being generated, but very, very slowly. So let's start with the first issue. The fact that pricing isn't being generated at all, that would kind of point towards there being a problem somewhere in your system. And immediately looking at this serverless view, you'll see that there is one service currently being impacted by errors. And the Lambda function being impacted is the node product created pricing function. Opening up the Lambda function that has errors, you'll see this side panel that then appears. This gives you some high level information about this specific function, as well as a list of all the individual invokes. You can then filter this list down at the bottom to only invokes that are showing you errors. And you'll see there's been four errors over this time period. There's been four errors with the pricing calculated function. You can click each individual invocation to see the logs for that invocation. And you'll see that you get a really handy error message in your logs here saying that there's failure generating prices. Pricing cannot be calculated for products between 90 and 95. The other thing you can do from within this view is immediately jump into the actual trace for this specific invoke of your Lambda function. In this tracing view, you'll see any errors that have happened, and you'll also see a complete end-to-end -end trace. Notice you've got requests here right from the actual post request that hit API Gateway. API Gateway returned a 201 created, so your actual API worked correctly. And then you can see the same section repeated three times. That is where SNS has tried to deliver this same message to your Lambda function three different times, each time causing a failure inside your Lambda function. So although the pricing service is generating pricing asynchronously, you can still see that as part of an end-to-end -end trace. This view will also allow you to see any errors related to the entire end-to-end -end request flow for this trace. You'll notice there's some errors here for other services as well, as well as seeing all the logs. And this is the logs for every single Lambda function involved in this end-to-end -end trace. You'll see you've got logs for the product API, for the pricing service, for the inventory service. You've got a lot of different logs going on in here. So the serverless view inside Datadog allows you to really quickly jump to errors, diagnose the issues, and get a fix rolled out quickly. But remember, that that isn't the only challenge you need to deal with. You also need to deal with this increased latency, services that are working, but working really slowly. 
These high-level insights will help you again here. You can see inside these top-level summary graphs, you've got some really interesting spikes inside your duration graph. If you actually click a point on the graph where you see that increased duration, you can jump straight into the Lambda function that that increased duration relates to. Looking back at the list of all your invokes now, you can have a look down this list of invokes looking at the duration to see where those increased durations are coming from. And looking at that, you can see there's one at the top here with a duration of eight seconds when every single other invoke seems to be in the order of hundreds of milliseconds. Again, jumping straight from this view into your traces, you can use that to see exactly what is happening. And here you can see that although this takes eight seconds, it does complete successfully, which is good because things are working correctly, but it is causing frustration for your users. So let's go back and have a quick look at the logs for that specific invoke. Remember, you can view the logs for an invoke by clicking the line in that table. And you can see that some some helpful developer who's come before you has put a warning log message in here. Because the product is priced between 95 and 100, the pricing calculator needs extra time to perform its work. At this point, you might go off and raise a ticket, reminding yourself to take a look later at optimizing the pricing algorithm. But what this has allowed you to do is to really quickly diagnose the things that are causing your users issues, whether that be actual errors inside the functions involved, or maybe it's just an increased latency and users are getting frustrated with the slowdown. And remember, you've got all of that insight without changing a single line of your application code. And using the new Datadog extension written in Rust, you can do that with minimal overhead to your function runtime. Now, if you're not a Node.js or CDK user, you can use the link in the description below to link to a GitHub repository that contains samples in various different runtimes and infrastructure as code tools. Getting all of this insight out of your serverless applications automatically is fantastic, but where telemetry starts to become really valuable is when you add context, context from your actual business logic. In the next video in this series on observing AWS serverless applications, you'll learn how you can add valuable business context to your apps. I'll see you there.